Right, we'll take a break from doing radio repairs. I think we'll, it's Saturday today. I think tomorrow we'll do a customer repair, even though it's Sunday, uh, if I can cram it in between the church services. So it's been suggested to me that I look at August 1982 Everyday Electronics. There'll be a link to this magazine for you to download it yourself. I do have the original, but it was more convenient to print it out and spiral bind it so that it lays flat uh, and with the better quality paper that we have today than the newsprint it was on. So one of the things is it has the C.B. Roger Bleeper, a Robert Penfeld project. Um, very pl prolific technical author. So we've just like, um, what, nine months into UK C.B. So we start with the investment of getting your film processed. So it's, uh, we've got the 110 instant load cartridge, the 126 instant load cartridge, and 35mm on show there. Buy pack. International Correspondence School, was it? Something like that. I don't know. I might be right. Watford Electronics, I think they lost the plot when they went into doing computers instead. Rapid Electronics still going. Marshall's retired. Sparkrite Electronic Ignition. That'd be a useful addition to my electric car, I'm sure. Not. So, we've got the editorial there. We start with the temperature interface for the TRS-80 computer. This is the TRS-80 Model 1. I had the colour computer and very successful for many years I had the uh, the optional ex the £369 disk drive and and so on and so forth and the multi-loader so you could do lots of things at once um, worked for me but that's the earlier one the cartoon there he was the other night working out a front door with his burglar's tools when a policeman caught him I didn't know Jack was a burglar. He's not. He was at his own house installing a burglar alarm system. It took him a while to convince the cop he wasn't a crook. Now he's working on another project. What's that? A police alarm. So here we are with the CB Roger Bleeper. And what I liked about this, because I've read, I've read this magazine time and time before, again in the past, but what I liked about this when I revisited it, thanks to the... Um, link from a viewer is that this is a plug-in thing it's not something you fit inside the radio so you're not altering the setting anyway which is something like, which appeals to me but it's still a grey area if you fit a supplementary Roger Bleep even if it's a single tone like this it's still a grey area so that plugs in three transistors this may be 40 years ago but that's still buildable today and that's what we're going to be doing and yesterday we made a start on doing just that I ordered the parts and most of them had come through and Mr Chippy has been busy and there's the piece of Vero board except this isn't Vero other brands available and there we have the three transistors the resistors some couple of capacitors got a tantalum bead there a ceramic and a little diode so um, these components are smaller than 40 years ago and so ones which they suggest mounting vertically well we don't have to do that BC109 transistors what did I pay for those? 34 pence each from the trade oh plus VAT so w that's going to be a forthcoming thing probably in about 10 days there's your page 3 showing the layout they suggest on VeraBoard and they're going to have it to a normal four pin in and out so it's going to be compatible with the uh, cybernet but you know if you wanted to use this on several different sets which were different wiring of course you could make adapter leads um, so you know it's not limited to that I'll tell you what would be really funny and that's uh, having Roger Bleep on a realistic 1001 handheld and people go what rig are you on I'm on a realistic 1001 beep that would <laughs> that would be funny Little things, little minds. So we're on with that. So that's why he put me in this direction. 
he built one at the time and that's what we're doing so this is on with uh, next month in the magazine automatic NICAD uh, charger I think we built this in multiple I built stack chargers for realistic handhelds uh, I had whole steel shelves of realistic handhelds because we had them out on hire we had them out on hire because sometimes business radios aren't what people need they want CB radios there was a particular customer who used to go a couple of times a year to I don't know where it was but it was a bird sanctuary and all the instructions as to what they were looking at came over CB radio so if he hired a set from us he could be part of that so all that kind of stuff teaching for those learning I think it ended up with a GCSE qualification two-tone doorbell or alarm a bit like that one on our tannoy system except um, that's a chime isn't it regulated power supply within that little circuit things like this you can pinch making an IC removal tool city business systems BBC training package mobile phones uh, in, on aircraft RS components to move to a 300,000 square house uh, square house in Corby which of course is where they are now wow the soldering tools this is where they discuss difficult to get components within the projects so they don't there are no difficult components in that CB Roger Bleeper there you are, you're going to have a quiz at your local church hall. Here's your <laughs> quiz thing to say who pressed the buzzer first. Reenact just a minute from Radio 4. And that's on a printed circuit and the pattern's in here. This has been scanned full colour. We printed it out full colour simply because the covers were... Um, I. I to be honest, it would have been better printing this in black and white. Explaining AC mains. All about the three phases and so on. Batteries. What kind of capacity you're expecting from a particular size of battery. What would be normal, what the outline size is. And of course, this has changed so much because we've ended up with the American system with you know double a and triple a and c and d and the nine volt rectangular whereas to me the hp7 is the double a and the um hp16 if they got it there somewhere was that wasn't that the um yeah hp16 is the triple a sp11 is the c it even says so sp2 or hp2 is the d and then we've got the pp3 which is the nine volt rectangular and a lot of people get PP9 wrong when they mean a PP3 because they mean a 9 volt battery and PP9 was the big square one used in big square transistor radios like Roberts and Hacker sometimes in pairs buy those today at £5.75 each and you know uh, how much listening to that quiz show on Radio 4 is actually costing you because the battery lasts probably only about 18 hours for two of those so there we are we're coming into rechargeable batteries which of course are nickel cadmium back here and without looking at this, the standard was at this time 500 milliamp power for a double A. It had just move away from 450 milliamp power. So let's see what they say. And they say 500 milliamp power. So you expect it to get 2 or 4 amp hours out of C or D size respectively. And the trouble with PP3s is they're normally 8.4 volts. And some applications will not work on 8.4 volts. So we've had to wait a bit longer for the nickel metal hydride 9 volt batteries to arrive for them to work in all applications. Um, and some um, 9 volt batteries were in fact 7.2 volts, which is something else to watch. So these, these, those little walkie talkies, you would be struggling. An instrument preamp. So 
presumably your electric guitar doesn't quite suit the amplifier. Public address system part 4, this is the real good piece of kit, decent number of watts, 100 volt line, all that kind of stuff, so a lot about that. And moving forward into video recording with cassette separates, video cassette recorder, you've got a power supply there to run that, it's a piano key machine, and this is Technicolor. Um, but of course we soon in the UK around this time started to get um, them for the UK market and I'm not sure if that's a black and white camera or whether it is a colour camera but um, at this point in time a black and white camera to plug into a video recorder would probably be around £140 and a colour one would be from about 380 so this is before camcorders and I do have still got one of these systems some circuits that readers have sent in this is that British National Radio and Electronics School and um, one of the technical people on YouTube Mike Dranfield recently repaired one of these oscilloscopes having a new transformer wound specially uh, so that the um, relative of the person who had bought that and done that course uh, could carry on using that oscilloscope so that's an interesting um, an interesting watch so you built this oscilloscope and you know you learnt by using something you'd actually built so there we go Pat Hawker was a well known um, ham radio personality that's his slot Back to some advertisements. J Ball. I had bits from them over the years. Electro value. I've still got a credit note for about four pence for them. Long gone. Green Weld. Magenta still going, but not with a range of kits like that. Then we've got the classified ads, radio component specialists. We used to get high tension transformers for them from them. And the, you know, 250, 0250, 100 milliamps, 6.3 volts at the 3 amps. We'd only be paying like a fiver for those transformers. You know, trying to get change out of 100 quid for something like that these days. My goodness. So then we've come to the end. Critical Ward advertising, a desoldering tool and B&K Electronics with some surplus things like a stereo cassette deck that would have been used in the music centre at the time um, and um, one or two things towards the disco type of thing and we're going to end up with Maplins on the back cover and they've got this keyboard to go into your ZX81 uh, the MOSFET amplifier if I recall was an everyday start again was an Electronics Today International project which they took on the matinee organ if somebody wants to buy a matinee organ now this is absolutely serious from me uh, the starting bid is um, is one pound I paid 50 for it and had to pick it up from Norwich with a fault I sorted the fault out it's been in my lean-to ever since it is the most disappointing thing I've ever bought and the kit was £299 plus the cabinet for £99 and so on and so forth. It basically it was about 500 quid by the time you'd done everything. And it's not the sound I'm looking for. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's not the sound. I'm not into electronic organs anyway, but it isn't the sound I'm looking for. It's more of a stringy bass sound. And you think, well, what? It's not emulating a pipe organ. It's not emulating a theatre organ. Is it em emulating a Japanese electronic organ? I don't know. But there you go, I do have one of those, and that's the biggest disappointment. <laughs> um, there you go, I've got all the magazine to go with that, with the instructions. But I did sort it out, it was a capacitor on the amplifier. Oh yeah, and it does 10 watts output, that's really room filling, isn't it? So there we go. So we'll be doing a few more um, service videos, and... Uh, don't know what we've got tomorrow but we're certainly going to have something and then you've got this forthcoming attraction of 
that's finishing this Roger Bleep off. And missed, there's only one break on the track, so it's quite easy to make. And there we are. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.